If you were to start learning Python today, where would you begin or how would you even start? When I first started learning Python, I was in college, it was eight years ago, and things in those eight years have changed dramatically. And you can reach an intermediate level of Python and a good understanding of the language in as little as three months if you are doing it properly and if you are learning in the correct manner. And I've seen this in hundreds of students that I've taught in my courses and in YouTube videos, and the learners who are the fastest and the best at learning Python all have a couple of things in common. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I have learned Python this year and how I would do it fast. And so first I wanna address kind of the big elephant in the room and that is should you be learning Python with all of these new developments in AI. You might see a lot of people, they're coming out and they're saying, hey, don't learn to code, AI is gonna replace software engineers. And working with all of these tools, one thing has become very apparent and that is these tools are probably not going to replace any sort of engineer anytime soon. What they're going to do is they're just going to speed up those who know how to code and people who know how to code are the ones that are going to take advantage of these different AI tools and this very cool technology that we have. So right now is actually one of the best times to start learning to code because you can now leverage these AI tools to accomplish things that used to take you know, a couple of weeks, a couple of months, you can now do it in days, hours, sometimes even minutes. You can turn an hour task into a minute task, right? So that is the power of AI. So yes, you should still be learning to code with all of these different uh, transformations in AI. And so now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about just some of the tools that you want to use to learn Python and to develop with Python. So with Python, there's really two kind of paths you can go with. You can go down a data science, data analyst role, where you're gonna be doing more machine learning and kind of data analytics, or you can go down the data engineering or software engineering role, which is going to have you working more with data pipelines, working more with traditional software, APIs. If you're interested in data science, AI, machine learning, it's definitely worth going and using things simply just as Jupyter Notebooks, Kaggle and Google Colab. And it's going to allow you to simply run code and very quickly, and they're very easy to set up. And then if you're going down the software engineering or data engineering route, if that's what interests you, and so you're gonna to wanna to leverage different tools and IDEs such as PyCharm, VS Code. Some people are using this new tool called Cursor, which has AI built into it. And you're gonna to wanna to learn how to work these because you're gonna be writing more Python scripts. You're not gonna be working just in the Jupyter Notebook format. And so make sure you understand how to use these tools, how to actually develop with these tools. That's going to be a large part of developing with Python is leveraging the tools that you have. And speaking of leveraging, you're going to want to leverage AI. And what I mean by leverage AI is that ChatGPT, and there's a couple of other tools that are going to help you code. And they're also gonna be very helpful in learning how to code in Python. And the reason why these are so helpful is because you can take an entire error message and before you'd have to sit and Google around, I'd have to read a bunch of blogs, read a bunch of forums. But now I can take, for example, if I type a bug, I can go plug this in to chat GPT and I can say, hey, what does this bug mean? And then it might ask me some questions about what does your code look like? And then after that, it helps me learn and understand in a much easier format than me having to go and simply Google everything. So be sure to leverage AI. That is how you are going to learn a lot faster than before because you are going to have this AI tool which has been trained on all of this information to help you learn faster. You can also use ChatGPT to create customized lessons. So what I have done with ChatGPT is whenever I'm interested in learning a new subject, I'll have it create some practice lessons and some ways that I can practice learning about that topic, maybe a project that will help me learn about a topic or a different skill set. And the reason why you wanna do this is because this is going to allow you to get very personalized, and more customized than just a course that is meant for you know the masses. It doesn't go very in depth. With AI, you can now go even more in depth. And really, it just comes down to if you're not leveraging AI, you're going to be slower and you're not going to learn as well than if you were to actually use AI to power your education and your learning. The plan you're going to want to take is to go from zero to beginner to intermediate. So if you're at zero, then you are going to want to take just a beginner's course and with that course, you need to learn the fundamentals. You need to learn how to set up and install Python. You need to learn how to install packages on the command line. You need to learn different things like variables, data types. 
you need to learn conditionals. There's a lot of things to learn. And so when you are first learning, you need to be consistent. So if you really want to learn Python fast, you need to be consistent with the number of hours that you put in. So just like anything else in life, whether that's lifting weights, whether that's uh, playing a sport, whether that's learning a new language, whether that's learning Python and how to code, you need to be consistent and put in hours every day. I'm not, when I say hours, you don't need to literally put in like a couple hours every day, but the more work you put in over a more consistent time, the faster it's going to be. So that's kind of my real big tip is even if you kind of, you're gonna make mistakes along the way, but as long as you're consistent with your learning each and every day, it's going to speed up and you're just gonna build and it's gonna become an exponential learning for you. And once you've figured out the basics and once you have been consistent, then you can move on to more intermediate things like, like learning how to set up Python in production, how to actually do different topics like web scraping, create different APIs, right? You can kind of go down a specialized field. Becoming intermediate is just a matter of practicing more and as well specializing in learning about a specific project. For example, if you wanted to learn how to build a machine learning model, you would first start off by learning and take maybe taking a course that specializes in machine learning with Python. And by doing this, you're going to first build your base level and then every new thing and every project you work on is going to build and on top of that foundation you have. And projects are amazing because they help you a couple of ways. You learn completely new skills, you learn how to problem solve, you create portfolio projects, or anytime you show off your skill level, you're going to be able to say, hey, look at this project I created. It's going to also give you a deeper understanding of a topic. So if you are really trying to understand data pipelines, then building an entire data pipeline is going to help you one in Python, and then it's also going to give you a really deep understanding of setting up an entire data pipeline. And then you can say, oh, I did that, and then the next time you have to do it, it's gonna be that much easier. And so I use project-based learning every time I want to learn a new skill. For example, I've been building a sports analytics website focused on soccer analytics. And what this has taught me is this has taught me how to do front-end code. It's taught me more about Django and APIs in Python, and as well learning how to deliver data to a front-end system to display and show to users. So a couple of ideas for projects that you can work on when you get to this level is one, if you're interested in stocks or finance, then you can build a machine learning model to help you analyze and trade stocks. If you're really interested in databases and in data engineering, you can build different data pipelines where you web scrape a bunch of data and then you store that into your own database. And then as well, if you're interested in video games, you could build a video game in completely in Python. By doing this, you're going to be able to learn Python fast. Could you learn it in three months? Yes, you could. It would be a lot of time up front and you could actually do it in three months very easily. It's more likely you're gonna look at a six to nine month range to fully grasp and get from a complete beginner to an intermediate advanced level. I've been doing it for eight years and I still learn something new every single day. And just some of the biggest mistakes as well is one, like we talked about consistency, and then two, don't fall into a trap called tutorial hell. And so tutorial hell is described as basically just doing the same thing over and over and doing tutorials over and over. And you kind of get this sense of like, oh, I'm doing more courses, I'm doing more tutorials, but you're actually not learning anything new. So you need to be doing, if you're gonna do more courses, do it in something where you're learning a skill. Don't take an intermediate course and then your next course, another intermediate course. If you're taking a course, take a course, and then take a machine learning course, for example. So you take the beginner one, then the machine learning one, and then maybe you take a cloud infrastructure one. And so you're not doing this loop of just doing the same course over and over, and you feel like you're accomplishing something. Really, you should be taking a beginner, intermediate, advanced course, projects over here, right? And then you can do this with every skill you have. So maybe machine learning, and then you take a deep learning, and then you take some sort of AI course, or you take like a forecasting course, right? So there's a lot of different paths you can go. It, not everybody's path is gonna be the same. Do things that are interesting to you. Take courses that are interesting to you and things that you wanna learn about and apply to Python. And really with coding is you should be trying to build things of interest or build things that have a different value to either you or to the business that you work for. So using Python is a means to deliver that actual value. So that is how I would learn Python this year. If you do it consistently and you do it in the right way, like we've talked about, then you will be able to learn it fast and you will be able to understand Python and use that for your career. And so if you're looking for maybe some project ideas, I can give you a couple right here that are related to sports analytics.